powered by Sports Interaction, Canada's Sportsbook. Think you know what way it's going to go? Make your bet with Sports Interaction. Whether it's hockey, football, or basketball, Sports Interaction has you covered. Bet pregame, live in play, or on one of our many prop bets. Sports Interaction makes it easy to deposit, play, and cash out. Join now and see all sports betting has to offer. Want to bet? Head to sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. That's sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. 19 plus, please play responsibly. For the second time in as many days, the Detroit Red Wings just got sensed in, uh, you know, what? So before before we really get into it, hello everyone, welcome to Game Over Auto. I'm once again joined by the wonderful Terry McGurin. Uh, last on the show after what was basically the inverse of this game, I would say. Just the Sens getting absolutely killed by New Jersey uh, back yeah. in November. It has been three months now, over three months since that game. Terry, how are you feeling about the Sens season in general? Like, how? Uh, uh, what are the differences or maybe even similarities um, as far as how, – how has your, your uh, feeling about the season grown over the past few months here? I'd say that the these last two games have changed my mind in a way because I was worried that it was it's that thing Ottawa does or has been doing the last couple seasons where when it really doesn't matter when it looks like they're out of it they start stringing together really good games um, right. and these two games really mattered and I was kind of expecting that letdown again uh, so now I'm really I'm really pumped you know it's. It's 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 great, but there's also a part of me that's just like, why do they have to make me care so much again? You know what I mean? Like, there's because like, I, I think I'm I'm just as sick as everyone else of just not having hockey that matters um, after December for the last few years. So it's wonderful that it's happening again. Um, tomorrow it's going to be March, and there are games that matter. Amazing! I love that for the Sens. But my God, is it stressful? Like I, I've, I've, I have not missed the stress of of fighting for a playoff spot. It is, just yeah, it, like, it's all I think about. I have a problem. Yeah, when I retweeted your tweet, I was like, "It's, it's bring your own ulcer." Like it's, yeah. I was really feeling it tonight. Uh, and looking at the out of town scoreboard, I see that uh, Columbus has closed out the win, five oh, three over huge. Buffalo. That's yeah, huge. and. Nashville has scored against Pittsburgh, so they're leading in the third. Woo. Oh man, that's it's when is the last time we were scoreboard watching this late <laughs> in the season, man? This is this is crazy. Yeah. This is like so because so several times during this game, I thought to myself, I am so jealous of casual sports fans. I just don't I just don't have it in me to be a casual fan of of whatever it is that I'm into, right? Like, um, Hockey and baseball, I I am into a fault. Frankly, it's it's bad. So um, it makes it hard. It makes it what to care that much to have it affect the next day of your life. Oh, right? that's horrible. Just it's it's terrible, and and it, it's a sickness, and we're and we're stuck with it. I think. Um, so. I feel. I feel. I just want to talk about how good this feels in general. Like, so for me, so for me across the pond right now, it's 3 a.m. So it's officially March and the Sens are in the hunt. So yeah. that's, that's, I, I can't believe it, frankly. So, and, and, and I'm, it, it's a nice mix for me. I don't know how you feel uh, as far as just like the elation of how strong they've played in the past, even call it four months in general, but also just being so upset with that start to the season that, you know, say they played 500 rather than whatever it was four, nine and one to start the year. Like they, yeah. they might be in the wild card spot right now. Like if, if, if it comes down to, and it will, because the East is a fucking nightmare this year, frankly, um, it's going to come down to just a few points. Um, whether you're in the second wild card spot or you're like five spots out, it's going to be maybe four points difference, right? So, um, and then and then you get the the wonderful: do you get Carolina or do you get Boston? That's a whole other. Like Carolina humiliated us. Yeah. So it, it's it, it. You kind of go like congratulations, 
you've made it in to face one of these two teams that should slaughter you, really, the way they've stacked up. Carolina and, hasn't done yeah. much, but but my <laughs> God, the East is loaded up now. It's and, and crazy. The, and yet, I think the Sens probably have a better record against the Bruins than maybe any other playoff team in the East. Yes, I think so, yeah. And just because? <laughs> just because that's how... Anyway, um... So strange, but yeah, you're absolutely right. The Carolina, yeah, no, no big, big moves yet. Yeah, I yeah. don't know if there are any, really any more big moves to make, frankly, out of the, the all thing, all the big fish have been snatched up at this point. Um, outside of maybe Chickren, but I don't think he's, I don't think Chickren's ever really been linked to Carolina. No, I don't so, think they need him. They don't like, really, yeah, they don't really need a defenseman. Um, so. I, I, I put in the uh in, in the uh, SDPN uh networks uh Discord today. I would love for a chicken bomb mid episode tonight, just just for the fun of it. Just see if the sends see the see say Pierre's like, oh this is great, let's just buy. And uh <laughs> what? I, I know, and that's that's the thing, right? Because you look at a guy like Watson tonight, another oh. team would be looking at Watson going like that's a guy you want. Like that's a that he's a playoff guy. Um, and I, I don't know. I mean, I guess Talbot too, but so now we're not selling like, clearly we're not going to sell, you know, it doesn't matter how bad we lose to the Rangers. Cause the Rangers are, uh, uh on fire right now. Right, and yeah. in, like, come on. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's going to be interesting to see if, if we can pull off a chicken, like, I, I don't know what that costs us. There's not a yeah. lot of teams bidding now so maybe we get we get what we wanted that's the thing right because when when the main piece so chicken i mean i think a lot like a lot of sense fans and i know we talked about i mean well, we, granted we mostly talked about carlson last time you were on the show but um as far as chicken goes uh i think he's the player i mean he's always he's been linked to ottawa since july august frankly but um just in that like ottawa's interested and there might be a mutual interest there um not that it matters because i think the the coyotes are desperate to move him before his no trade kicks in um which would be this coming off season so TikTok arizona um but yeah i i you, you gotta think that i don't know i don't know how that would work actually when when there's like two big pieces left and most teams are done their shopping does that mean, okay, well, I have, like, the biggest asset now. I can drive the price up. But there's only three teams left calling with space. So what what does that do? Is your asset worth more suddenly because there's fewer things to go shopping for? Or is it not worth as much because you got three people calling instead of 15? I, I don't know what that means for the price of chicken right now. I, I have to think that, like, come Friday at, you know, whatever it is, 2 p.m., 2.30 p.m., it's going to be best offer on the table, don't you? Like, are they oh, going to yeah. do it again? Or are they going to hang on to them again? They can't. There's no way. There's there's no way. Especially, like I said, I, I do need to double check that. But I'm pretty sure his no trade kicks in this coming off season. So suddenly, their hands are going to be tied even more. Um, yeah. Because I, uh, I believe at the moment, he either has no, no say in where he goes or very limited compared to what's going to be kicking in. Um, but so yeah. what do you you give up a first and Grig? Like wh- wh- who do you, what are you what are you willing to part with? That's the thing, because I don't know. It depends on how desperate the Coyotes are. I can't imagine the Coyotes are, are are psyched about bringing in a whole bunch of protected picks. So you'd think to move for uh, make a move for Chicken, you're going to have to move your first this year and probably not protect it. Like if 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 if, if the Coyotes have any leverage at all, they're saying no 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 like. This is gonna stay unprotected, especially if yeah. it's a fringe playoff team like that. Like that, they've got to they've got to be going after that. You think, especially with just how top heavy this draft class is. Um, I, I don't know. I I want. I'm so I'm so torn because I wanna I want to cheer for a team that buys at the deadline so desperately. I really really do. But the names that have been thrown out recently, the the Parecos, the Dumbas. Um, I just, it's, it's, I don't want the sense to buy for the sake of buying, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, I agree. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe I, we'll I, get, I, I, don't know. I think like, it, I'm, I, I like, 
I like Chikrin. I think that would be a great addition. Mm -hmm. Um, and like you said, he's so his his modified no trade clause. It's a ten team list that kicks in in July. So that's the um, seven Canadian teams plus Columbus. And, you think so? I don't know. Like I don't know. Well, I'm not sure. I, I, I most of the time that it involves. I mean, it's usually like you know tax reasons um, more than anything. Um, but it would not surprise me at all if if the first seven teams list are Canadian teams. So when you have a player like that with a couple of years left on his contract and, and you're the Sens, I think you got to maybe throw in a few extra picks just to get your guy. Um, but um, possibly I, I yeah. if they don't get him, I wouldn't mind seeing us. I don't know what it would cost for Jensen out of Washington. Yeah. Uh, and I know he's a UFA, so he could walk. And so you're kind of like, well, how much do you want to give up? Do you risk being able to sign him to a two-year deal, three years max? Because right. he's, what, 31, 32? Um, but he's good. He's a solid defenseman. He's not the splash that it would be, but right. it would. But, uh, you know, I mean, if we if we hope to make any noise in the first round at all, not get swept. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I on on the subject of desperately needing a defenseman, another name that that you brought up last time you were on the show was Dylan Demello, and I thought I just I I just chime in now that the uh, the Jets are are playing the Kings tonight. Uh, the Jets are up five to four. Dylan Demello two assists plus five. So, um, yeah, that probably not up five to four. Up five. I, I don't okay, listen. I, I'm the first to say plus minus is a dog shit stat. It's terrible. It's 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 useless unless you're looking at it at a game by game basis. I think in a game where your team is up by one goal, five to four, and you're a plus five, that I mean, yeah. that's just a strong outing for for Demel. And obviously, they're not ever going to move him, but just the idea that that the Sens had Shabbat's ideal partner, or maybe even Sanderson's partner, if you want to, if 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 everyone's in love with Zub, Shabbat is a top pairing, just like. That's that was the guy right there, and they got. I don't even remember what the Sens got in that deal, like a third round pick, maybe. I don't. I don't even I remember think something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it it was sad to see him go. It's one of those trades that I never really understood, but I don't know. Let's see what it we felt, got. felt like a stri stripping down uh trade just for the sake of stripping the team down. At that point, um, let's see here. Uh, Am I Peng, according from uh, living in the mist in the in the chat here, pens have tied up their game. Um, from Adam Firebear in chat, has Chicken played a playoff game? The Coyotes made the bubble, um, so if that counts, I, I can't remember how that went. Actually, did, did the Coyotes beat someone in the bubble? I don't remember. I know they made the bubble because I remember that was that was uh, in like the you know the the little bit of time that Taylor Hall was was there. If Chicken was healthy, he would have been playing in the bubble. I think. Um, that is a good question. Yeah. Pulling it up, pulling it up. Let's He's played here. in nine playoff games. Okay, so that must have been the bubble year then, eh? Nineteen twenty. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't remember uh, who they played. Uh, Mr. The New Guy 87 in the chat says two firsts, no Greg, I guess, as far as Chikrin goes. So I don't know. I don't know because Greg does look good, but he's also a complete question mark at this point. You can't really base uh, your all your value on him on, on a few games. Um, I, you know, I have, if... I'm, I'm so excited about uh, Ostapchuk coming in. And, mm. and I know people are like, he's 19 relax they're gonna play him in the ahl but he's six four he's 200 pounds he's he's probably the most defensively sound prospect we've had in a long time other than mm -hmm. maybe pinto uh you know i mean penalty killing at the world juniors two gold medals he's he's a big centerman who can play wing i i don't mind losing greg that's a a big statement, but right. I don't know, but yeah, because it's one of those things where you look at the at the at the uh, not just well, I guess hypothetical depth chart at center with Norris being out, but you look at the 
the hypothetical center depth that the Sens could have starting next year, and you just don't know where they go. You got to move someone to the wing at some point or move them uh, in a trade because you got Norris Stutzla for Frank Stutzla is the number one center on this team for ever now like Norris at no fault of Norris just because he's he's hurt nothing you can do there so but like you're the number two center now so you got Stutzlin Norris Pinto should probably be a third line center at this point like I see no reason why he shouldn't be in the top nine do you want Greg playing on the fourth line for eight minutes a night like it just doesn't make sense so you either move him to the wing and maybe he isn't as strong on the wing or or maybe you just you know, just hope for the best and package them for a, you know, a top four, a, a unquestionable top four defenseman. Um, we got to give up something. Uh, we got to give exactly, up something. Exactly. Like, exactly. Uh, oh boy. What a hot mess. Yeah. This, uh, it's one of those things where you go like, if we had lost both these games, at least we'd know exactly the road we're on, you know, to be like, okay, we're selling what we can here. Right. And and you'd also have to raise the, oh God, the Debrin cat question. Like, wh- what are we doing? Which is still a question. We, Months we, later, it's still a question. Still a question because he got, he's got, you, you're going to give him, are you going to give him his, like his asking price for eight years? Are you going to give him his, uh, his, you know, uh, I forget the term falling out of my head. His uh, um, yeah, qualifying offer. Yeah, his qualifying offer is what nine five. It's, yeah, it's nine, I think, and that's the thing because when you're Debrinket, like he's still having he's having an off year for sure. But he's having a pretty decent year. But if you're if 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 I'm in Debrinket's shoes and I think I can get back to scoring at a fifty goal pace, no way I sign at eight years for under my qualifying offer. If I'm Debrinket, I'm probably just going to take my qualifying offer and bet on myself that I can score at a fifty point fifty goal pace again. Because, like, I don't think he has any reason to doubt that he could maybe do that again. Especially, like, granted he had Patrick Kane's help, but I think he's hoping to, you know, maybe get more time with Stutzler or something. I don't know. Like, it, it's, it's, I don't, I don't know. I, I can't imagine him signing a long-term deal at a discount because he seems like the perfect kind of guy to, who would want to bet on himself. Um I agree, so, uh, and I think it's forty. I think he's he's he hasn't had a fifty goal season, right? He's had two. No, but he scored at fifty. He's had scored at, at a pace of fifty. Yeah. yeah. Um. I just i I'd like to think that he he's clicking with this team, but I you know you never know, right? It, these guys are like they have to be businessmen as well, right? Um, because it's it's a short career, um. And God forbid you make eight point five million instead of nine, um, right. but but at the same time, as Dorian or whoever the hell is going to be in charge by the time this happens, are you really going to look at Debrinkat's season and go, "I'm going to offer this guy way more than Tim Stutzel"? Like, come on, Probably like, not. and that's such a good point you just made too, because I think if you're Pierre, you're looking at the whole deal like the. I, I GMs, I think probably I mean, Grant. They probably make their subsequent moves based on what they did to acquire said player, right? Like I, he has a cert. I, I'm sure he looks at Debrinket and thinks, okay, well, he looks at Debrinket and, and and also says like, oh, that's also a first, second, and third that I that I traded away. You bring a new management with absolutely no connection to any of these players. They probably look at it in a more business sense, right? They look at it more, more of a maybe not, maybe not unbiased, but like almost, if that makes sense. Like they aren't trying to, because we we know that Dorian is great at fixing his own mistakes. He's great at making them and fixing them. So I'm not saying to bring it as a mistake. I'm just worried that he's looking at it as a mistake he has to fix somehow. Uh, I agree, and I think maybe maybe the word you're looking for is kind of like heartless. Like they come in and yeah. they're like, "Well, I don't, yeah. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't have an affection for this team. This is a, I bought it as mm-hmm. a business owner. So, and this guy's not, you know, I mean, to me, I look at it and I say, okay, you go, you know, Tim Stutzla, bring in Brady Kachuk, and hopefully Jake Sanderson. Everything else." could be traded by the new owners. There's not a single player on the roster that I would say that the new owners coming in would go, I can't move this person. 
right you know um and if i didn't if i didn't love this team that's that's what i'd look at it i'd pick those three and go i'm going to build around them and if mm -hmm. i can move this guy out and get something better i'm doing it i don't care about their friendships i don't care about all those memories <laughs> yeah if that's the thing yeah cuz as as different as this team looks compared to last year after this past summer given the potential of new ownership new management the whole deal who knows who they're bringing in who knows what they want to do with this team it might be an even more different looking team next season who knows what happens this summer right if you bring in a whole new management who want to build a team in a completely different way there's so many people who are going to they're, they're cuz everyone I think I think gen the general consensus is defense wins championships more often than not, which is the complete opposite of how this team was built, right? So I think if you bring in mo most GMs are going to look at this team and go, "Oh my God, can we get rid of two of these forwards for, you know, a couple defensemen or something?" So yeah, like new new management could mean a very different looking team uh, depending on how they go about it. And honestly, with the whole DeBrinket situation, it wouldn't surprise me. It would very much surprise me if he's the first guy to be moved by this management. But like you said, new management, it wouldn't surprise me at all if he's the first one shipped out. Yeah, I agree. So I I, I don't know. I want to sign him long term. I don't think he wants to sign long term unless it, the dollar value is higher than what he's done this season so uh, how do you how do you i i just don't know how an ownership could justify it to go yeah timmy's making what eight point eight point three yeah. mil right so so you're gonna i mean and of, of course he's not gonna take 8.5 because other players are signed for 8.5 this just this past you know few weeks that are not nearly as good but right. man, that is a hard sell to go like, we're going to give him nine. Everybody cool with that? And that's know. a tricky thing too, right? Because he's he's going into it so differently than so many other players. I'm guessing if, if we're going into, if we're trying to get into Debrinkit's brain going into these contract negotiations after the season's done, so many players are signed for, no, 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 whatever. Just look at this one season I'm having. It's the Bo, Bo, Bo Horvat 100% said, look at the season I'm having. Don't look at how I average 50 points over my career. Look at this season I'm having and sign me to this 8.5 over eight years to it's going to be the guy saying look at these last three seasons i had before coming here so yeah. i don't know how different gms look at that what, what they want to value more but it's it's such the whole the whole to situation is so different than most i think uh positions we've seen sense management deal with over the last couple decades it's such a weird weird scenario yeah. I mean, I, I kind of look at it like an Eric Carlson thing, right? When they were like 11.5, you really think you're, we're going to give you $11 million? Like at this age, at this stage in your career, yeah, you're one of the, the most talented defensemen in the world, but I'm not going to give you $11 million. So he leaves, he gets 11.5. We make out like bandits in the trade. Um, yeah. And now people are talking about bringing him back. That's there's a lot of Sens fans on Twitter that are like on board with this if they retain 30% or something. And I'm like, that's a crazy move. As as I, much as I want to say that this is the real Eric Carlson we're seeing this season, like I, I love him. Uh, even to the point when, you know, I, I know a lot of diehard Sens fans that were turning on him towards the end. I never, I never once even remotely turned on him at all. I was huge Eric Carlson fan the whole time still am to this day he's never going to have a season like this again um frankly because he's in his 30s and he's never had a season like this before like it's just it just doesn't work out that way he I I think he's a great asset even if he just ends up being a 70 point player for the next couple of years absolutely but the Sens the Sens don't need the, the the reason why I find so much hope in the Sens is their core is so good and most of them are so young. I don't want management to then surround them with a bunch of guys that are going to be falling off three years from now when they're all 
at either mid or towards the end of their prime. Yeah. Um, which is why I think someone at you know around the age of Chikrin makes so much more sense. Yeah. So where are you on Uyghur then? Oh, because he's extended. Because 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 Calgary gave him a was it an eight year deal as soon as he got yeah. there? Yeah, it hasn't. So it hasn't started yet. It starts next season. He's he's eight years. How old is he? Twenty nine, thirty. I think he'll be twenty nine next season. Yeah. Twenty nine. That's. I don't know what his cap hit is actually on that on that deal. I because he's he's good. He's really good, but. I'm not sure. Yeah, and he's a local boy, isn't he? He is. Uh, he is. So that kind of throws the whole uh, maybe, maybe you know, I know Ottawa loves getting their guys and, and, and maybe getting a hometown discount out of them, but that's not going to be on the table with Uyghur. No, no, that's the thing. The the, no. the price would be high. He's making uh, 6.25 for <sighs> eight years. Um mm. Full no trade for four of them and then modified for the last four, but his bonuses only run through the first four years. So he gets 2 million every year as a signing bonus. And after that, you could buy him out if you had to, and right. it, it wouldn't be brutal saying after year five, if you bought him out, it would kind of be a, a manageable thing or you pay an asset to ship him. As, as a few people have pointed out, if the Sens haven't made a cup final in five years, it's not happening with this core anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think I, at first I was against the move, but now I look at it and go, well, depending on what it costs us. Yeah. I could see that making sense. Yeah. You know? that's a, I, don't, I don't know. Cause Calgary is in, in almost a similar position to Ottawa where they're just kind of on the fringe and, and, and like, are they buying? Or are they selling? Cause I'm not sure. Um, we so. because that's the thing. What 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 does Calgary want in return? They probably want NHL players back, at least as part of the package. Like I don't think they want to completely strip the team down at this point. So they they're probably looking for at least one capable enough roster player in return with maybe picks and prospects. I don't know what what they'd be looking for, um, but I I think I think oh, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's it's the eight year contract that scares me. It's the thing. Right? I know. Like it's. I know. Ugh. But his but his you can buy out. Whereas you look at a guy right. like uh, yeah. Carrieco, like that that contract you can't buy it out. It's it's like Carlson's the same deal. The the bonus is all the way through. I think his his last year of his deal, it's six million dollars signing bonus or something ridiculous like that. So you can't buy the guy out at all ever. So I, I look at this one and I go, this is a contract you could buy out in year five. I can live with that if you can't move them, you know? Um, and I, I, you know, we, we can't, we can't do this. We don't want to be the next Maple Leafs where we're, you know, we can't score our way out of every game. Oh, I hate that they got O'Reilly. Yeah, that's, uh, and then Jake McCabe on, 50% retention for the next two years on top of that. Like, come on guys. Come on. Yeah. Uh, I, as, as much as, I don't know, I, I don't know what the fix for this team is because <sighs> see, th see, this is, this is the problem. This is the problem. We're having a great time. Sens have won three in a row. They are firmly in the playoff race. And that opens a whole new door of anxiety. Like we, 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 we haven't like, it's just so much fun. We haven't been able to have any of these conversations for the last five years. And now that we are, I'm a nervous wreck and I hate it. I, <sighs> I mean, if, if you look at, you can look at it, this as the bright side. As far as I'm concerned, this season, this is fun. Cause when right. new management comes in, like we, like we discussed, they have no emotional attachment to these players and right. we have no idea what this team will look like next 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 spring you know like i it's gonna be something like oh damn pittsburgh's up pittsburgh won um Ooh. and new york minnesota has gone to overtime so the islanders got a point too but we'll see if they can hold them to just one is these these three-point games are gonna kill the sense like 
just awful. Um, yeah. I do want to quickly touch on something that did happen in uh, tonight's game. Um, the fact that the Sens are the first team in NHL history to score a power play, shorthanded, even strength, and penalty shot goal in one period in a regular season game. Hey, so that's, that's pretty cool. The only other time it's happened, uh, the Oilers did it in the 1984 playoffs. So not bad company, <laughs> frankly. Yeah, yeah um, pretty good. It's pretty amazing. But, um, yeah, like, I mean, what a start to the game, though, eh? Like, that game started just... I have, I, have yeah. the, I, have, I have the the events written down here. So you got Kubelik scores for Detroit. He and Hamnick take offsetting roughing penalties. 18 seconds into the four on four, Stutzla is awarded the penalty shot. Between the call being made and Stutzla actually taking the shot, Zubin Bertuzzi fight, and then Stutzla scores. Uh, and then, then there's nearly 56 minutes to go in the game. Like, it's just, yeah, yeah, uh, total, totally. That was that was playoff hockey like i hadn't felt that in my chest i'm not like i i don't know if i'm gonna make it like your tweet said for those of us that survive we'll be doing a podcast just like (laughs) and i it's the thing it felt because two teams fighting for playoff spot back-to-back games against the same team that is you're right that is the most that's the closest thing we've experienced to playoffs since 2017 and of course, it helps that they won by a combined score of, of 12 to 3. But how great was that? Yeah. And Kachuk, like getting to see Kachuk and pl- like what he, oh. what we all knew, we all knew what right. he would be in the playoffs. But to see it, to get a little even, glimpse of it, even, even if it's just four games against Carolina, I want to feel it. I want to see it. You know what I mean? Like just, yeah. Yeah. I will happily take that. Um, and, uh, one last thing I wanted to bring up before, uh, before zoom kicks us out here, uh, the zoom God's telling us we got five minutes to go here. So we're in a season where the Sens are fighting, climbing back up the standings in the playoff spot. They call up mad Sogard five games in. He's yet to lose in regulation. I don't want to speak it out exactly, but I will just for the sake of the show. What are the odds, even if it's just half as impressive, what if we're in for a hamburglar like run here with Sogard? Because he has like weak goal against in tonight's game. Absolutely. Yeah. That 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 was a rough one. But other than that, he's looked great. 4 0 and 1. Uh he had a 919 save percentage heading into this game. It's that's only improved as far, I think, depending on how many shots. Was it like 16 shots? Anyway. Yeah. How confident are you in him? Or, you know, you can go the other way too. You could say, like, Frank, you could be like, I'd be much happier with Forsberg. And that, and that, like, I, I can see either way. How, how are you feeling with the current, uh, uh, rotating door of goalies for the Sens right now? It's, it seems to be working out all right. You know, like, no one has, no one has Matt murrayed us. You know, like everyone's done pretty damn well. Uh, so I, I, yeah, I, I think, I think Sogard's a good goalie. Like, I'm, I, I won't be surprised. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be upset to see him be part of the tandem next year. Yeah. Cause it sounds like they're shopping Talbot cause he doesn't want to come back. He doesn't, they, they, I think they, it's, I think it was, I don't remember who, who, maybe Friedman or, or Chris Johnson. I can't remember who. Uh, reported that they had offered an extension and he declined. So it sounds like he's, if not being moved, at least they're trying to move him by the deadline. So uh, yeah, honestly, a Forsberg Sogard tandem doesn't have me too upset for next season, as, as long as, as Sogard keeps playing fairly well and just kind of keeps doing what he's doing right now. Yeah. And uh, by the way, for the Demello trade, it was a third, but we picked up Levi Marilainen with that third. So okay, so well, that's yeah. uh, goalies, man. Goalies are voodoo, man. Couldn't, couldn't, yeah. couldn't play at all in 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 the CHL, and he's killing it in pro in Finland just because goalies make no sense. Yeah, goalies, that's right. They make absolutely no sense. Uh, well, with that, um, I think we're gonna call the show here. Terry, thank you so much for coming back on the show, man. Um, if we if I have space to bring you on again. 
post trade deadline, I'd be happy to do that as well. Always love awesome. uh, our conversations um, as rooted in uh, fear and, and despair as they may be sometimes. <laughs> it's always a blast having you on the show, man. Yeah, thanks. Anytime. Yeah. All right. And everyone for watching, uh, thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to SDPN on YouTube. And uh, yeah, lots of uh, lots of game over content coming to you this week. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye. Game over! Powered by Sports Interaction, Canada Sportsbook.